report, which I
Um, so this is um, Rachel uh, Gravett, um is going to introduce this one, I believe. Rachel, welcome. I oh. do know, Chair, that Rachel was having some problems trying to connect. Would it be possible to defer um, and, and then come back to it? And then if she's not, if she's not been able to join us um, by then, then I could pick it up and with support from my colleague. Yeah. Yes, in that case, what I'll suggest, uh, shall, shall, shall we go on to um, item uh, eight, um, the, uh, the summer offer, and then we'll come back to, to item seven, hopefully when, when she, she arrives in a few minutes. So um, item eight, the, the summer offer COVID recovery. Um, Sarah Rampour, I, I believe, welcome um, to the committee. Um, uh, I believe you're going to present this, this report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that welcome. So I'm Sarah Rempel. I'm the new Director of Education for BCP. Uh, so the summer offer is part of our COVID recovery plan and it's looking to address gaps in learning, mental health, um, the, the transition to secondary school that um, activities couldn't take place. Um, also some safeguarding issues, exploitation and knife crime, as well as um, looking at food poverty and, and supporting that. Um, so we've got four core offers um, over the summer. So the first of that is the Holiday and Food Fund. Uh, so this is a, a um, we, we've secured 25 providers across BCP and um, they're providing lots of different activities across the summer from football to cooking to um, sort of general uh, sort of holiday clubs. Um, but the, um, the guidance was that they had to offer a meal, they had to offer nutritional information to children, they had to support parents with signposting and also support parents um, with at least a weekly uh, nutritional information session. Um, and then they had to also provide activities um, that stuck to the physical um, activity guidance um, to make sure that children were, were, were getting their uh, physical activity in. Um, so we have or we, we're aiming to reach at least uh, sort of between 1700 and, and 2400 children. Um, these are children who are um, eligible for free school meals, although we have retained a pot of funding for schools to offer for um, places or to signpost other children that um, they feel were vulnerable. So perhaps children who were, uh, who are young carers or with additional needs. Um, so our aim is that no child who um, wants a space is, is refused a space. Um, we've also um, started planning a, a specialist um, HAF um, activity scheme for children with additional needs. Now, although this is still um, very much in its infancy, the idea is that this is going to um, continue past um, the HAF funding period. Um, and this is absolutely something that is needed in BCP to support children with additional needs in the summer. Um, so uh, that there will be activities um, for uh, children this summer um, schools have already identified um, children and families who would um, benefit from, from those activities. Uh, so we've had about just over, I think it's a, a million pounds um, to secure these activities for summer and Christmas and anything that's not used will go over into the Christmas period. Um, we've also been able to add a bit of value because providers have been very clever um, and included the use of, of volunteers and, and food donations um, as well in their provision. Mm -hmm. Um, we uh, have also supported um, or will be supporting children who are transitioning from preschools and early years into September. Sorry, hold on a second. I just need. I knew that would happen. Um, so these children, so, so this offer is going to mirror the half offer. So early years will be able to offer uh, four days a week over four um, uh, over four hour sessions. So children should be able to sign up to about 16 sessions. Um, and this is going to support those children who may well have missed out on some of those transition activities um, uh, over the summer. Uh, our second offer is summer school, so you would definitely have heard this in the news. Um, the DfE had offered funding to any secondary school to um, support children um, with catch-up due to COVID. 
it, it's a little bit disappointing that we've only had nine secondary schools um, in BCP sign up to that. We've got seven mainstream and, and two special. I do think that with the recent spikes in COVID, I think that school leaders potentially have not wanted to ask their staff to, to sign up um, to support those. Um, but those schools that are taking part are, um, so schools were allowed to decide which children that they would target. And it was thought that mostly schools would target their children, their year sixes who were moving up um, to year seven. Um, so all schools that are taking part, apart from one, are going to target their year sixes um, who are transitioning into year seven. And summer schools are, are happening right now. Um, most schools are looking at uh, a combination of enrichment activities plus that academic catch up um, that is uh, absolutely needed over the summer. So our third offer is the free school meal vouchers, the supermarket vouchers. Um, unfortunately, the COVID local support grant is reduced this year um, from last year by about 500,000. So um, as you'll know, the, the, the supermarket vouchers last year and over Easter and Christmas as well were £15 per child. Um, because of that reduction in the grant, we have issued or um, uh, schools have signed parents up to receive vouchers that are now going to cost 12 um, for the value of £12.50. Um, this is actually the amount that schools get for free school meals. But if you remember at the beginning of the pandemic, it, um, the government decided to increase that amount to £15 to support parents because um, schools can buy in bulk, um, you know, in big kitchens, they can buy in bulk, but obviously parents weren't able to do that. So that was the reason behind the increase. Um, so we are only able to issue those vouchers for £12.50 still per week for six weeks. We've also been able to spend 15% um, or sorry, 20% of the money on households without children and single households as well. And we have a um, a pot of money that's gone to the CAB to target those younger children and um, that has been um, uh, sort of on social media and that's been shared with um, early years providers to make sure that actually um, families are, are, are getting that money. So offer number four is our seasonal response. So um, we had £100,000 to support the prevention and education of our young people around county lines and exploitation. Um, so we uh, engaged an ex-county lines nominal um, who'd spent time in prison for gang related violence, um, a young man called Tanaya Sam. And he has worked with uh, schools to um, raise awareness to the young people. Um, and, and actually he's really engaged well with them. We've had some fantastic feedback from schools. He's also providing training for frontline staff um, and the rest of that money is going to be given to local charities um, and groups in different areas to help them put on groups, um, to help them put on events over the summer. And the idea is, is that's to stop the um, young people coming into areas like um, Bournemouth Gardens and Sandbanks where there, where there have been those issues. Thank you, Chair. Sorry about the dog. Back to you. That, that's perfectly all right. It's quite entertaining watching you disappear for a moment. <laughs> um, yeah, and then reappearing like a ghost. Um, let me look, looking, I'm going to the questions. I noticed, Lisa, you've already got your, your hand up. I mean, I'm just looking at, we've, we've got sort of four areas here, haven't we? So, so we need to sort of be quite careful to, 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 to decide which area we're, we're talking about. So, so if I ask people when they, when they ask questions to sort of tell them, Make sure the officer knows which bit we're talking about. So, so uh, Lisa, you were you, you were first. Um, mm -hmm. I just put my hands up just as you were halfway through the seasonal response, um, and you have kind of covered what I was going to ask actually, because I was um, I've been really sh horrified really at, at what's been going on in Bournemouth Gardens, and <laughs> that there was um, a really serious knife incident quite recently, and I wondered if we're targeting enough actually on those evenings where there's um, maybe like a thousand young people sort of there like from 12 up um, mixing with some much much older people as well mm. and I think it's just this just so many um, 
really serious issues there. And I almost wonder if it's better to target them actually where they are rather than trying to get them through the school or whatever, because they're, it, it, I feel like it needs some sort of outreach actually there mm. on those evenings. Um, I, I don't know if it get, if your funding can even do that. So. So I've been, um, yeah, it's a really good question. And I know we've seen on the media um, lots of um, quite horrifying things. I've been working with Sophie Ricketts, who is the seasonal response officer. Um, she would know um, far better than I about um, all the work that's going into um, supporting our young people. I do know there is outreach. I know Tanea Sam um, himself is offering outreach in those areas like Bournemouth Gardens. Um, but certainly I can get some more information for you about everything that's going on for our young people. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, um, Roberto, sorry, Roberto, um, you're, you're next. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, just uh, a clarification about, uh, or maybe more information, uh, uh, I can see from the document about the second point, uh, um, holiday and food. Uh, the BCP have secured 25 providers delivering a variety of activities. Uh, um, if you can provide more information about uh, this type of uh, provider, what they are, or are charities or type, which type of organisation. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, I don't know, Chair, if I'm able to share my screen with you or if you'd like me just to, uh, that probably won't work actually, so I can just go through with you. Um, so on, our, on the um, family information directly on the website, we have providers, for example, AFC Bournemouth, who are running multi-sports clubs. We've got creative um, art groups. We have got a dance group. We've got um, a provider who is um, looking at cooking skills. And then we've got... Um, uh, like nurseries, like Cuddles and top, who, who are offering sort of generic um, holiday clubs um, that, that, that you might um, be aware of. But um, yeah, so quite a wide variety of, of providers there. Um, anybody was eligible to sign up. So the funding was there for, for anybody to sign up, but they had to stick to those guidelines of offering a meal and offering that nutritional advice. Thank you. Thank you. Does that answer your question, Roberto? Yeah, yeah, yes, thank you. Uh, George, you, you, you are next. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, a couple of questions. First one relates to the food poverty or the free school meals. Um, mm. The ambition is to reach uh, up to 2,400 children. Can we just confirm that that is the, um, within the BCP geography that actually receives free school meals? And I have a question. Um, no, I think that was um, how many people, how many um, sessions were able to be provided. So we, any any provider was welcome to sign up. So we were able to secure 25. And um, the idea is, is that they can access up to 16 sessions. So that number isn't the number of children um, who receive free school meals. Actually, off the top of my head, I don't know that number, but I can find it out for you. Um, but that was looking at what we're able to provide um, over the summer. Um, I do know that there are more children on free school meals than we could actually get places for, but we do know that not every parent would sign their child up. So if I may chair, then we don't have any confirmation that we can actually supply a food offer to all the children that may request it. Is that the case? Um, do you want me to respond to that, Chair? Yeah, if you will, because I mean, I, I was also going to just follow up just with what George was saying, so just to, um, because I know finding that the actual number of children who are entitled to free school meals is, is actually quite, it can be a strange challenge, can't it? Because mm. um, yeah, it, it sounds, yeah, because I know I've asked the same question um, and I thought it was going to be a simple answer and it, and it, and it ended up not being a simple answer. Um, so, so, um, so, so just sort of expanding that is, yeah. is, is how do we know the number of children on free school meals um, and, and how do we marry that up with... with so, sorry, Elaine, did you want to come in? Well, only only that Rachel in the previous conversation, uh, Sarah, so I just thought it might be helpful um, given you. that Rachel has now been able to, to join the meeting. That, that, that might be very useful and, and welcome, Rachel, and thank you for joining us. My, my apologies. 
my apologies. Um, I was unable to get in. It was the most stressful 15 minutes of, of the week, I think. <laughs> so could you could you just repeat the question, please? And I'll try and help. Do you want to start, Josh? Absolutely. The looking at the figures, the ambition is to reach up to 2,400 children um, with the uh, activities, including food. Uh, my question originally was how many children do we actually have um, on free school meals? And with the provision that is offered of 2,400, could we reach all the children that actually have free school meals? The next part of the question then is, um, in reality, what are we doing about the shortfall of parents who may well wish to ha take up an offer but can't get a place um, so that they can access free school meals during the summer holidays? Um, and, and I'll add my little bit that because that, um, I was saying that I know it is it um, is actually harder than uh, people would imagine to actually get a handle on the number of free school meal children um, in the conurbation. Um, it's um, the three school the free school meal numbers we only calculate um, twice a year in January and October, and um, the the last count I had was and it was in at the height of um COVID was we had nearly eleven thousand children um claiming free school meals. And um through the winter fund grant etc we were able to offer um vouchers to all of those children throughout the conurbation um who wanted it plus additional. Sorry I was I literally just joined as Elaine um sort of introduced me so I'm presuming this is to do with the half funding and your, and your yes. summer offer Sarah. Yes it is. Yes. Yeah. And um I have you ex uh, I'm presuming you've explained sorry because I'm coming in. I'm sorry, presuming yes. you've explained um the offer is for this summer. Yes. Uh, yes so the, sorry, the, the, the challenge sorry this is sorry, I'm, sorry. I was trying to be helpful and I'm now confusing it but the challenge <laughs> that we need to answer is if there's a gap in provision what are we going to do about that um that's what i'm hearing clearly so forgive me if i'm being too direct but that's that's the challenge i think and also um so what would our response be if we have more need than we've got places for um and i think what chair was indicating is that just because we've had eleven thousand indicated as entitled to free school meals that does not necessarily convert into what is required in this program now so i hope chair that that's put some clarity and um around what what the challenge yeah, is i mean, I mean just just to just to sort of fill you in where we've got to we've had the presentation where we've said that there's likely this four strands to the offer um and we're having some questions and um, uh, we're now on to the free school meal um, um, offer part of it. Um, uh, Nicola, I noticed you've got your hand up, so I'll, I'll come. I'll come to you in, in a couple of moments if, if uh, cause I'm sure you've got something to say. So, uh, Chairman, may I finish um, the uh, go on from what Rachel was saying? So, um, yes, yes, please, please do. That's what I was hoping you might. So, all children eligible for free school meals will be. Um, are given a voucher so schools organize that they do that through a portal and vouchers get emailed out to the families that are eligible um, for free school meals so that will um, so so not everybody not every family would want to sign up for a half place um, so sometimes it's used for parents who are working over the summer sometimes it's used um, for parents um, just to support that transition back into school um, so not, not all parents will want to sign up for a half place. However, all children who are eligible for a free school meal will get a voucher. OK, thank you. That, that, that makes it um, slightly clear, I think. Uh, George, do you want to? Get, are you happy with that? No, I, I'm pleased that all children that are eligible will get a voucher. Um, but I calculated that it's only uh, one in every four and a half children. I know that's a bit odd. Shall we call it two in every nine children will have the opportunity to take uh, take put? We don't want to be Samson here. I think was it was, was it Samson for the delicious? No, it wasn't Solomon. Um, but uh, yes, it looks like only uh, two out every nine children will have the opportunity for this uh, this half and half um, sort of offer if they wish to take it up. Um, may I ask a further question? Um, yes, you can, but I'm just going to come to it to, because I feel that Nicola may want to add to this. Um, so if you would bear with me, George, just, just to give Nicola a chance, because she did add to this. 
no, to be honest, Chairman, I think we got there in the end. Um, I, I think the point was at one point we were in danger of um, perhaps looking at two things and thinking they were the same. So the uh, the funding for free school meals, as Sarah has just set out, will is available for every child and it's done through the schools and it's a much um while I don't underestimate the work that has gone to set us in, it's actually a very smooth process now. What's happening with the half is is quite different. Um, it's a separate set of funding, and therefore those two things do need to be separated. And I'm sure when um, Councillor Farquhar goes back to his emails, he'll find the um, uh, the decision record, which um, shows that three quarters of a million pounds was allocated to that funding of um, free school meals through the summer. Thank you very much. Uh, George, to, to your second part of your question. Yes, indeed. I, I, I thank uh, Nicola Green, sorry, Councillor Green, um, to advise me to go back through my email. So I have no doubt that the decisions have been done appropriately in the best interest of the children. My question was related to, to make sure that nobody was missing out. But I think my point still stands is that the, with funding, that only two out of every nine children actually take up this particular offer, should it be fully exploited um, by parents. So my next part of the question relates to the seasonal response, if I'm pleased, Chair. Um, it was mentioned by another member here as regards um, getting involved with the, um, uh, the lower gardens. Um, we've all seen on the news um, the reports around sandbanks um, with our older uh, children. Um, particularly with underage drinking and uh, behaviours which are um, not really acceptable. I wondered if the uh, the seasonal response is taken into account um, addressing um, those that uh, use sandbanks as an opportunity. And I have a further question or a suggestion after that answer, please. Would you like me to respond, Chair? If you wouldn't mind, that would be helpful. So um, I only have um, anecdotal evidence that that's going to be responded to by the seasonal response team. But again, Sophie Ricketts, who is the lead for seasonal response, um, I'm more than happy to go back to her and ask what they're doing to support the, the young people in, in Sandbanks. I know a lot of work's going on in the lower gardens and um, in the meetings I've been in, they've mentioned other areas, but I don't, I can't confirm whether Sandbanks is one of those, but I can get that information for you. Thank you for that. Does that, does that answer your point? Yes, I, I, I really appreciate that reply and I really appreciate that you've got a, um, a, a grip on, uh, for one of a better term, hotspots. Um, well, I was really interested in uh, the, uh, the seasonal response whereby um, with uh, lived experience regarding country li county lines, I should say, mm. um, to uh, warn uh, those which attend those sessions. Um, of the uh, dangers of exploitation and um, falling into the trap of um, those sort of behaviours. Um, with the providers, I please forgive me, I don't see in the uh, in in the pack here a complete list of all the providers, the 25 which you mentioned. But could I ask if the local authority has ap uh, approached uh, an organisation? Uh, within my own particular area called Vita Nova. Um, they've done a lot of work in schools around uh, theatre work um, with uh, individuals that have gone successfully through uh, the rehabilitation programs for um, junk, uh, sorry, for alcohol and substance abuse. Um, so if, if not, then uh, I'd like to suggest that there was a, uh, an opportunity for a shout out for an organisation that already works with schools um, to actually um, intercept these behaviours and educate and raise awareness for children for exploitation in other areas. Thank you. Um, they aren't on the list of 25 providers and I think um, most of the um, providers are really sort of aimed at primary children. There are some secondary children as well. However, I am um, due next week, I think, to meet um, with um, uh, other partners and the police to look at what education we need in schools. So um, thank you for that. Um, and that's certainly something that I will take back to that forum. Thank you, George. Um, is that, is that thank you, Chair. I really appreciate that response. Thank I really you. appreciate that willingness to explore the avenues for providers, which are perhaps outside of, um, as mm -hmm. is indicated here, for primary school children. Great, thank you. Um, now I'm just looking at. We've got a few hands up, but, uh, but Nicola, your hand is up again. Is that is that legacy? Or did you want to come in on on that? 
No, it's just another attempt to be helpful, Chairman, um, and to, um, uh, while I don't have the figures to respond to Northover and Farquhar about the um, the very serious and, um, and, uh, and, and correct question to be asking here about outreach work um, as part of summer response, I'm looking to see if I can get the number of hours which were commissioned um, for detached youth work when the plan went ahead right at the very beginning of the work on summer response so I'm sure that we can get that to members of the panel if that would be helpful after the meeting um, I, but it, has, it was very much um, dovetailed and Sam Banks was definitely flagged up as well as obviously the lower gardens but we mustn't forget those other areas as well just because it's not a you know particular area where people congregate you know we, we still need to be aware of those issues but happy to put sorry I'm Speaking on um, Councillor White's turf here a little bit um, about youth um, outreach, but um, I just thought I'd try and follow up on it. I, I'm sure that that will be very useful. And just 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 one, one point because uh, we, we have a, a custom in in children's uh, ONS so we, we we tend to use first names. I've noticed we've we, we've slipped into using councillor. Um, it, it's just that uh, I, I quite like using first names because because we have people who are not councillors involved in in the meeting, um, and it, it makes it a little friendly, I shall we say. Uh, and easy to deal with. Uh, which comes to, to Nathan. Your, your hand is is uh, is next. Are you there, Nathan? Right, what I'll do is I'll. He's I'll, sorry, I'll, can't, um Councillor Burton, he's just messaged me saying he's got some internet problems. So right. he, I, I know he had a question, but if you can come back to him, and I'll, 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 we'll do. Go, go, if go, not, go. I'll get him to Georgia to ask for him. Right. Okay. Well, what I'll do is I'll, I'll come through to Beverly. You, you, you are next, and then I'll, I'll try Nathan again um, afterwards. Uh, Beverly. Um, yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Um, there's a few um, things here wrapped up in this document, um, and I think. Um, I, Apart from the fact that it's focused obviously around school meals and that's the fundamental requirement and uh, some of the things have been highlighted here um, and that's around the benefit of activities and well-being and all that all those because um, as everybody knows I'm the lead member for Festival Coast Live um, and, and when we started to look at that in terms of providing activities out in the public realm one of the most important things it's very important to me is that um, we know that um, access to funds is the biggest barrier to people partaking in culture, cultural activities, any sorts of activities. And that's why everything we've done for Festival Coast Live about getting people back in the public domain has been free so that people can enjoy it. And um, a big part of that is community and, and, and different aspects of our community. Um, and that's based on, you know, diversity and all those things. But one of the things that's really passionate to me is having activities for young people. Um, and I, there is a group of young people that it is very difficult for us to provide that activity for and that is those in the sort of the 14 to 17 age group um, and I don't think we should necessarily be derailed by the, the topic of underage drinking it's not a new topic I can't think of a decade ever or a time whenever there weren't children drinking and they shouldn't be the the the, the trick to that is providing that the activity or things for them to do that matches their age group and this is what councillor northover said earlier and i think that we are up to a point we're quite good up to a certain age mm -hmm. certain things up to a certain age and i think that um there's that we have potentially a bit of a void when we get to that sort of 14 to 17 group they're not little kids they're not quite adults and I think that everyone and I don't think there's a, a no, that I'm not sure that there's a, a council in the country that has totally cracked this they need a different kind of thing they don't they don't want to do a bit of painting and a bit of gardening and they don't want to do this they want to do things that are more adult um and some of the things that that, that i try to encourage through festival coast live was things like maybe hosting this battle of the bands final kids of that age actually want to generally they want to make music they want to hang out they want to uh, play instruments they want to make noise and they want to do that sort of thing and i think that there's an opportunity here i hope there's an 
opportunity with this and with outreach and perhaps with Festival Coast Live to try and join that up so that we can put more in the public domain um and we've had us we did have a small grant fund running this year to help communities and I, I just think maybe we can plug that in a bit better so that we can deliver more stuff in the public domain that's going to suit teenagers teenagers that don't want to be treated like kids you know, they're nearly adults. They don't want to be doing stuff at school. They want to be hanging out down the beach, down the gardens, which is, you know, where where the older teenagers hang out. And we just need to find a way of getting the things in place that they actually want to do and, and, and not kind of treat them like kids i'm not criticizing anybody at all please don't what what this this is great what's being done i'm just highlighting that there is this group and it's really really tough to get to them and uh, people of my age and counselors are not the best place people to get to them but we need to engage the people who are is probably my point and just try and join it up a bit better thanks chairman that's okay. I'm just wondering, was there a, was there a question there? Because I totally agree with what you're saying, because it was my understanding of 14 to 17 year olds. If you've got a room of 20 of them and ask them what they want to do, everybody wants to do something totally different. Mm -hmm. um, when you've got five and six year olds, they all want to do the same thing. But 14, 15 year olds or 17 year olds are all different. Um, but, but, sorry, what, what was, the, was there a point, a question that you wanted answering? Uh, well, I think what I'd like to do, Chairman, is say that we need to perhaps uh, look more closely at those links. I think that's what I'm asking, that perhaps that we can note that is there something that we can do um, with Festival Coast Live, with the outreach and with this that locks the whole thing in together because the, the fundamentals are the same. It's about providing activities for, for, for people. I realise this is based in the Sheffield. It is how we provide those activities for people who don't have the means to pay for them activities. That's what a lot of this is about, isn't it? It's making sure that these children are fulfilled, uh, you know, and they're not bored and they're not out underage drinking. So I think my point is that there's something we need to do in the background, Chair. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I'm offering to, to say, is there something that we can do with Festival Coast Live to join into this and join in with outreach to, to, to close those potential gaps? May I respond, Chair? You, you, you can. I've noticed Mike's got his hand up as well. So, so do you want to go first, Elaine, then that might go second? Thank you. So um, thank you. It's a really good point. Um, and there is um, some of the money left over from that £100,000 will be given to youth groups and charities in, in um, all across BCP to put on events in their own local area. Um, uh, what, what I will do is go back to Sophie Ricketts, who leads on seasonal response, um, to check that she is aware of um, Festival Coast Live. Festival, yes, Festival Coast Live. She um, is, yeah, yeah. she is, yeah. Right. yeah. And, and to, to get an answer to you as, as, as to what is being put on for children of, of that age group. But you're absolutely right. It's a very tricky age group. Yeah, and can we help? That's great. Thanks. Thank you. So I, I must apologise, Sarah. I just called you Elaine. I'm very, very, very sorry about that. <laughs> Um, Mike, um, you, 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 uh, had your hand up. Yeah, thanks, Chairman. I just wanted to make the comment that uh, Elaine and I are in the process of uh, commissioning a piece of work to look at our entire youth and outreach offer. I mean, particularly in the light of uh, what's happening with COVID. I mean, the comments that Beverly made absolutely resonate with me. You know, we, we need to look at our total offer. This is not going to be a quick exercise, but it's something I think this committee might want to program into its its forward plan at, at some point in the spring. Obviously, if we can do something, uh, something you know, quickly over the summer, that would be nice. But uh, I just wanted to make you aware that this piece of work is going on. Thank you. Right, thank you. Thank you very much for that input. Um, now, I think I saw Nathan was with <coughs> us then. Um, Nathan, can, can, can you talk to us now? I know you're having some technical issues. Mm -hmm. I think he's still struggling, so right, well, I'm happy to see you. Um, are you going to, um, to, 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 to Yeah, take he's, that? he's messaged his his question i think i've got the gist of it um 
It was well, about... Have, have, have a go and then we'll pause and see if you want to message yeah, you anymore. Hopefully I'm correct. Um, so it was about um, how many how many students are actually engaging in the summer schools and are they giving feedback and what what kind of is their feedback because we were we were saying that we really agree with what councillor dunlop was saying in that our age age group is really difficult to reach a lot of the time so are you actually getting like direct contact with the young people and asking what they actually want thank you shall i respond to that chair yes please do yeah uh, so, do, um, Georgia, do you think Nathan means about the summer schools that schools are running? Um, <laughs> I think so. so yeah, he uh, said yes. Oh, OK, yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, really great question. So um, because schools were um, able to apply for the funding themselves, um, they were left to provide uh, those activities and the catch up in, in terms of the academic as to what they see, uh, what they best saw fit um, for their existing students and for the students transitioning to them. It's a really good question as to whether they ask their students. I don't know the answer to that, but as ever, I can speak with the school. So unfortunately, as I said, there's only nine schools um, participating in it um, and find out if they did actually speak to their students and certainly those students who are transitioning up to them about what it is that they wanted. It's a really great point. I suspect the answer will be no. Right, thank you, Georgia. Do, do, is that answering your question or do you want to follow up on that? It does. I was just wondering, um, so do you have the numbers of the amount of students who are actually getting involved with those? Sorry, courses? yes, I, I, that was part of your question. Um, no, okay. I don't. And I think um, we we're asking for a response in September for uh, from the schools as to how many children engaged. Um, so I think We've also had COVID, which has um, scuppered a few of the summer school plans as well already. Um, so in September, I will have um, numbers which I can bring back um, of to how many children engaged and which year groups they were in. Because obviously we've offered, or rather schools have offered places, but like with the half placement, they actually have to turn up um, to engage. So I don't have those numbers, but I can get them for you after the summer. That's okay. great. Thank you. Yeah, that would be very useful. And, and I mean, if, if I can just because I just want a couple of points of, of, of that particular one, because I, I've got some experience of summer schools at schools. Um, I, I It is a shame that not more schools are, are, are mm. doing it, but I also understand uh, totally because getting staffing for that sort of thing um, is, is quite a challenge. Um, when you rely on the same staff that that, that have been there all year. Um, I, know, I know I had to buy in. Um, outside people to, to, to help um, and, and also you have the problem that um, several people who sign up to take part uh, don't in the end attend so, so you can't actually give the number until it's actually running um, but I would be also quite happy uh, very, to, to actually see the numbers involved um, and, and, and get and I also totally agree that the, the year six year seven is the target um, because it's a transition I know in my experience those who attended some of the schools settled in a lot faster um, in, into the secondary school uh, and, and, and that gave them a little bit of momentum um, they, they didn't lose those first few weeks of term worrying about things um, so, so they, they gave them a bit of a, a head start um, so um, so I, I don't see any more hands up so uh, let's see if I can summarize um, Ooh, we, we talked about problems in, in Bournemouth Gardens and, and other hotspots uh, like the Sandbanks um, and the seasonal response team um, and, and their actions. Um, we, we talked about the, the, the list of providers. We, we had some examples of providers, but, but I know we're, we're quite interested in and who the providers are. Uh, we've talked about the children numbers, uh, 2,400, and whether that is enough and whether everybody who uh, would like to take part um, can. Um, we talked um, and cleared up um, the free school meals offer uh, and, and divided that into all children are getting the free school meals, but not all children are getting that they're half. Uh, but then again, not all children um, may want it. Um, we uh, talked about um, um, the, 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 festival, the, the, the festival live, um, getting access to funds for, for, for young people and, and making sure that interesting things for young people to do, which, which caters all tastes and ages. Um, 
and um, how many children are engaging with the school offers uh, and whether the schools um, asked the, the young people and children what they would like in those offers. I, I think I've, I've covered everything there. Um, so we, we, we're going to go back uh, a, 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 um, a little bit. Just give me a moment to get to where I should be. Um, so we're, we're going back to item seven. Um, hopefully. So it's a partnership academy uh, development social work initiative. Um, so Rachel, you're welcome. Now, now you've managed to get to see us. Um, who are going to present this report? Thank you, Chair. Because my um, the teams keeps freezing if my video is on, but um, it seems to be okay if I turn the video off. Yeah, we, that, we, 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 okay? we, we, we've all seen you, so, so, so yes, yeah, so we recognise your voice. We know who's speaking, so, so <laughs> yes, please do. Yes, it's hard not to recognise this voice, I think. <laughs> so thank you very much um, for inviting me along tonight. So I'm here to give you an update on the Partnership Academy development. And um, this is Bernie within um, Children's Services. And um, I'm able to update you tonight on the Social Work Initiative and the uh, future developments of the Partnership Academy across the whole sector of children's services that's not just within bcp children's services but also with our health colleagues with community and voluntary sector across um, and across the whole range of support um, for children's services um, we hope to um, officially launch our um, partnership academy through a website in september 2021 and i have made an offer to um to to the chair to come along and in either um, October or November to do a pre-meet to share that new um, website with you because it will be all singing all dancing and, and fully um, explain and give you an idea of what we're um, what we're offering under the under the partnership academy but to update you on the initiative and the work that's already taken place because um, even though it hasn't yet been launched we are doing lots and lots of activity which um, hopefully you've seen in appendix one of the uh, of the briefing uh, report that you've been provided with today so the partnership academy itself is um basic will focus basically on the delivery of best practice and the, the academy will design and deliver training and professional development opportunities for all of our staff um, alongside a training offer developing opportunities for the wider partnership um, it will strengthen partnership arrangements and interventions in line with the improvement and transformation programmes for children's services, and it will pr promote um, a multi-agency delivery of best practice, connecting the work that we're carrying out and um, developing the training packages that are most needed for our workforce and linking in and closing the loop with what our quality assurance practice is telling us um, throughout the service. We're developing the partnership alongside Bournemouth University and you'll see we've got lots of ASYE students um, coming in from Bournemouth uh, sport, uh, working with us from Bournemouth University with um, some other opportunities there for BAMA work as well. Um, it, the, um, if, you, if I can direct you to the Appendix A to give you an update of the type of work that has been going on as a result of some of the sort of start work that we've done on the partnership. Um, like I say, I don't want you to think because the partnership hasn't gone live through the um, Partnership Academy website that we haven't been working very hard in order to develop the workforce through the action plan and the improvement journey we're on. So we've had several development phases explained here. We've got an ASYE programme that's for newly qualified um, workers in their first year of employment. So um, that's the assessment supported year in employment um, where we're um, aiming to have 50 students um, in a two year period pass through that programme. And um, that's for newly qualified social workers in their first year. And they're giving they're given um, smaller caseloads and additional support by practice educators to help them um, embed into the job and develop their learning through that first year, which can be, as we all know, can be very different um, um, than what we're taught through through the university um, 
degrees that they're on. That's been very successful. We've got another new co cohort starting in September. We're currently up to eight um, and we hope to have 10 stop, uh, start in September with us. We carried out a training needs analysis to, to absolutely understand what the workforce said that what the workforce needed and um, what they said they wanted to us. So we have developed and implemented a practice fundamentals programme, which um, you will see um, listed later on as to what covers what, what is covered in that. We've introduced um, a more in-depth two-week induction programme for all new starters. So new staff have protected time in their first couple of weeks with us and um, lower, lower case loads and um, support to, uh, with regards to time to be able to um, help them embed into, into the service and into the teams that they're, that they're working with. There's a dedicated um, induction programme for them where they have time to, to, to look at the, some of the things that we're implementing, for example, the Children's Services Toolbox, which um, um, details how we do things in BCP Children's Services. We've got an aspiring managers programme where we have um, some um, well-developed social workers or, or family support workers or other staff who are wanting to move on into management programmes so we can support our Grow Your Own um, um, programme and um, have some um, workforce progression for those members of staff. We've got child-focused practice model um, where we're uh, where we're embedding um, our, our child focus practice model within within children's services, some public law outline training, core skills and um, sweat training, which is the social work evidence template training, which um, supports social workers in writing consistent and analytical focused reports for the course for the course. So those are some of the things that have been implemented um, over the over the over the last um, months as we've been developing what the bigger picture looks like for the um, for the Social Work Academy. The practice fundament, um, we've got new training programmes which are um, being developed and, and plan to start in September to add to all of those that I've just mentioned and again further on in the in the autumn term development. Practice fundamentals um, are um, what we uh, are mandatory training that um, through the training needs analysis, um, social workers and children's services workforce told us would be really useful for them and what they what what they wanted to know when they when they were first with us. Um, we're asking all, all current staff um, to um, go on all of the practice fundamentals training as well as all of our new newly inducted newly inducted staff. And you'll see in the um, impact column there some of the really positive feedback that we're having. They're bite-sized courses, some of them are half an hour, um, um, some go up to about an hour and a half, um, so it's not a lot of time for staff to um, have to leave their, their day job. And um, we've got a whole list of things there that you can see in the second column um, of what we cover in each one of those, of those sec sessions. We've developed a children's services toolbox, and um, this is one of the main sort of practice standards um, items that, that we've developed in order to set out with, to the workforce what good looks like and how we do things in children's services. And it's a go-to manual for all children's services staff. We've had two phases of introduction at the minute. We concentrated on developing the children's social care element to start with. There are 40 sections to the toolbox at the moment. And um, we had um, a launch session in April where um, we um, had 10 sessions, um, I think probably some of you were invited along to that, 10 sessions where teams themselves um, or, or social workers who volunteered um, were um, bringing alive the um, children's service toolbox, I think is the best way to describe it, or each of those sessions within each of those sections within the toolbox. They're all currently on our workforce development website. If anybody would like to have a look at them and, and would like to watch them, please feel free to do so and I can provide the links for those should, should you wish to. Um, we had another set of sessions in um, June and July where we covered teams, so you could find out what the Access to Resources team does, you could find out what the Special Education Needs and Disability teams does or the MASH team did. B 
because we were having a lot of staff say to us they didn't actually know what um, some of those teams that they don't come into connection uh, uh, that they don't connect with necessarily do and um, so that helped them with their understanding there. The next phase has been developed and is concentrating on education and um, we will be doing a launch of that uh, of, th of those particular elements and sections of the children's services toolbox in September time, September October time. So again, we can give you a link and you can have a look at um, what the toolbox what the toolbox is and what the toolbox looks like and I'll happily demonstrate that um, if you would like me to come along and show you what the Partnership Academy um, website looks like in, in the next month or two. We've further developed our lead role of the Pan Dorset and Wiltshire Teaching Partnership and um, like I said earlier on we're increasing the number of social workplaces for BMA and step up to student social workers. We've got qualified press, practice educators to support all of those within the teams. We've got um, uh, we've got um, apprentice, apprentice um, social workers working with us and um, we're, um, we're currently recruiting additional staff to, um, to work with us on, on, on developing that Pandora Teaching Partnership. We lead on that for the, for the South Wales West supporting other local authorities with that. We've got grade progression panels so that um, staff within our service um, can see a future with BCP Children's Services and can move on. Um, I mentioned earlier on about the management um, progression, um, but there's also um, progression right away from um, your ASYE level to level two and level three social workers. So um, there's not a rite of passage through that. You have to um, show and evidence that you have um, um, had um, particular sort of complex cases and um, done some your, your continuous professional development etc in order to, to apply and be assessed for the next grade of your social work and um, career. Future developments and the, and, and the very exciting part for me is the is the launch of the Partnership Academy in the next in the next few weeks. Um, we're currently working with our colleagues in comms and um, web design in order to finalise that now. So we'll within the partnership, we will have the sort of umbrella of the Partnership Academy with all the different faculties which are detailed under section four in your in your report there. And we'll all have their the, the detail below that. And um, social workers will be able to, or services staff, partnership staff will be able to um, click on um, click and say each one of those to see to see where they can go, what they can what they can access. There'll also be a, a range of um, resources, um, other training offers offers outside of um, um, BCP Council and our partnership nationally that are offered. And um, we'll be promoting our recruitment and retention program through that, um, and they'll and we'll be developing it um, over the coming over the coming year across the whole of children's services. We've got a social work census that will that we will be doing and we're required to do um, annually and we'll be doing that in November, which will give us some um, good robust information. And we've also got an academic residence residence residency um, on particularly on neglect from uh, with the program lead for social work from Bournemouth University, who's basing himself within the assessment team so he can uh, be immersed in, in the detail of what's coming through to the assessment team, understand what's actually happening, and that can help him inform um, the, the teachings of the social work um, degree within, within the Bournemouth University. So that's all the work that um, sort of we've been, we've been uh, beavering away at over the last um, um, six to nine months and developing. The most exciting part is, is absolutely to come, when we when we launch the um, when we launch the um, academy in September, and I would really like the opportunity chair to come along and share that website with you all, um, because it will really bring it alive for everybody and um, to understand what our aspirations are for our workforce in the future. 
thank you. Uh, yes, I, thank you very much for that. I mean, you, you, you've covered a huge amount of, of stuff there. And I, firstly, uh, I, I find it is it, really a great scheme. Um, I, I think yeah, it, it's, it's good news and, and it's going to make a difference. Uh, I've, I've got a couple of, um, actually, I've got three questions um, that, that I've got here. But the, the first one, I've, I've realised you, you won't be able to answer my first part of the question because it, it seems it's got it's got loads of strands to this, hasn't it? Um, and lots of different people will be doing different things. And, and, I, and I was wondering about the number of people involved, but, but it, it's rather silly asking you that because it's so multi-stranded. But, but, but the question, first part of the question is, is are, are we convinced that we have the right amount of space and the right amount of capacity uh, for the right number of people? Um, um, the, the second part of the qu question is just wanting to know how we get the assurances that the, the training quality that, that they're receiving um, is, um, is is good um, and the third part is, is is actually how long will it take for us actually to see a, a noticeable improvement or change um, just so we get some sort of time scale of, of how long this training actually takes um, so I mean, it's quite a complicated three there um, questions but uh, okay I'll, I'll try now those in that in that order with regards to um capacity we, we are obviously concentrating on children's social care in the first instance because obviously we have the improvement we're, we're on that improvement journey and have the action plan and um obviously um inspections um to 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 work to and um in, you'll notice um everything that we've put um in that um first phase that you that you see there is with regards to um, and driven by the action plan and the improvement journey that we're on. Um, capacity, the more and more the more and more we do, the more and more people want. So uh, that's exactly why we did the training, training needs analysis to understand exactly what was needed out there and connecting that with our quality assurance work in um, which obviously um, or not as the case may be about what's happening what, what's happening out there with regards to practice so anything that we learn that we're not happy with through our quality assurance work we feed back into particularly the practice fundamentals and um, because they were the main areas of, of concern and um and and then we're able to measure those we've we've got a new practice educator who um, is based in the workforce development team and she's going out visiting teams she's having a look working alongside social workers at what they're doing so we've got the quality assurance framework and the quality of the audit work that we're doing but we've also got a practice educator um, who's working who, who's working um, with us and alongside all the teams to make sure it's easy delivering the training but making sure it's embedded is is obviously and making a difference is much is much more different so she's following um, the people who have been on the training courses and going seeing them in, them, in their actual work in um making sure that um they are using it and if they've got any queries or if it's slightly different to what they've learned um within the training session helping them understand it and embed that within their practice so we're really pleased to have Richard on board doing doing that for us now the quality of training um again um we will we'll be tested on that and how well it's embedded um through our quality assurance programs and um through the monitoring of the training and the reviewing and, and the feedback um, from the training that we get from those people who have attended, which is not just, like I said earlier on, our own staff, it's also um, within the partnership. How long will it take? Well, I think we're seeing some impact now with some of the improvements that we're seeing within the, um, the improvement journey and, and the action plan. We're seeing some of those green shoots coming through now. Obviously, it's a journey that we're on and um, we've got to stick at this and um, make sure that we that that we're relentless with our um, quality assurance and our embedding of the practice and um, checking and double checking that everything is continually um, on that trajectory um, uh, on that improvement trajectory so um, again um, we children and families will absolutely tell us whether we're getting it right or not they absolutely they absolutely make that clear we'll know from staff and um, a change in, in the culture and, and how they're feeling about their work and, and what they're doing and, and what difference that's making to, to their lived experience as well as the lived experience of, of children and families. Thank you very much for, for, for those answers. Um, 
I noticed, well, hang on a bit. Um, Sandra, you've got your hand up. Somebody's hand disappeared. But Sandra, you, you're a... Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, can I just say thank you very much for this uh, this really interesting uh, presentation. Um, and, and I think the Partnership Academy news has got the makings of a really, really good news story. Um, and I I hope that the comms team, you know, really can, can run with a jolly good story around this because I think it's really important that Children's Services gets good press um, and this is something that we can be really proud of. Um, the work that you're doing there, I mean clearly you're putting in an awful lot of effort in this um, and, and obviously the, um, the, the Academy will upskill our existing staff and also help to train the new social workers but can you just tell me what, what the current situation is um, regarding the number of social workers in, in BCP? Have we got enough? Do we need more? Can you, could you give me some sort of idea of where we are with this, the, the, the sort of figures around this? Thank you. We haven't got enough social workers. We um, we haven't got enough social workers and it is, there is a national shortage for, for, for social workers um, across the whole country. So we are, uh, we have recently just relaunched our recruitment campaign um, and and um we'll and are um aggressively looking to try and recruit more permanent social workers within our workforce um we're fully where we have all of our service managers in place now we still have some team manager vacancies but we've made some strategic um decisions with regards to the um interest or, or, or agency team managers that, that, that we currently have in place because they've been with us a long time and um, they know BCP ways. So sometimes it, it's not a disadvantage to have some of those interim staff in who are working well and absolutely making the improvements that we want to make. That, that we want to make. With regards to, to um, social work staff, again, yes, we, we do need more social workers at all levels and um, hence the reason we're doing some of our grow your own and our and, and being quite um, um forthright with our asye um recruitment and, and retention and um again we've got two um agencies supporting us in the recruitment of our social workers right the way through from level one two and three and we have a steady flow um, I wouldn't say it's it's a massive flow, um, but it's a steady flow of new social workers joining us um, uh, um, since November, right the way uh, right the way through to now, and we continue with that. Um, if you have a look on the website, we've launched our on the BCP website, we've just launched our new recruitment campaign and um, uh, targeting all the vacancies that we have. Is that fair, Elaine? Is there anything else you'd like to add to that? No, thank you, Rachel. And I've taken artistic license from the chair there. Sorry. Yeah, I, 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 will, I would say, uh, Elaine, is there anything you'd like to add to that? Or? <laughs> no, thank you, chair. And no, thank you, Rachel. <laughs> um, Beverly, um, your, your hand is up. I have. Thank you, chairman. I've got three areas I'd like to focus on, if I may. Um, uh, the, the first one is I'm looking at the at the screening, the quality impact analysis screening. You've identified obviously that that uh, there are a, a variety of groups, various uh, protected characteristics, and they will have different needs. Am I assuming that you haven't mentioned the main paper that equality, that full EQIA will come when you start to identify the impact service on those groups? How will that progress? Is it um, because the 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 aim of this is to Im improve our service, isn't it, to the the end user, to um, to children and families? So uh, will we start to see the EQIA come forward, that full one, around the impacts on those different characteristics in terms of our service? Absolutely, absolutely, and it's a big focus with it. In um, all the training that we deliver and all the work that we do in, in children's services, it's absolutely at the forefront of of what we're trying to of what we're trying to achieve in in the work that we do. Okay, and I accept that's a big piece of work as well to do that to do that properly. So thank you. Uh, my second 
point is this is a center of excellence that we're creating um how are we going to um define that center of excellence what are the um how are we going to determine what excellent looks like so how are we going to define excellence so uh this is what we think is excellent make that statement and then um my my questions around that is how are you going to measure that you achieve excellent um and how are you going to measure that that excellence is making a difference to people's lives so um we we'll know whether well the partnership academy um we we will um develop as we're as we're going through as, as obviously it's not going to happen overnight and I think I've said uh, we've, we've got an aspiration for it to be a centre of excellence by um, 2023 so on our improvement journey um, we will be obviously we're moving into um, requires improvement and then into good and as we become good and outstanding and those are our aspirations for um, children's services uh, um, as we as we move through the time and um, we'll only be able to do that through really good solid training and support for our work for our workforce and linking in with our partnership with regards to that we can't do that by ourselves we'll have to do it with our partners with the university who develop most of our, our Bournemouth University um, who do that who who train and develop um, a lot of our new workforce and as we as we become better through our improvement um, journey and um, and and get those um, requires improvement and good and outstanding ratings eventually through Ofsted. People will want to come and work with us. They'll see what we can offer those individuals and um, we'll be able to measure um, our outcomes as a result of um, as a result of, of, of what staff say to us, what the lived experiences of children and young people, what the lived experience of our staff is the fact that we've got people knocking on the door wanting to come and work with us and um, we've got a really high quality training there and development opportunities um, for the workforce okay all right I think you might have also partially answered my third question actually so the, the definition of outstanding is Ofsted's definition so this is no okay so who's def how are we where are we defining what that excellent is and I know I'm asking really pinpoint questions. Everyone knows I always will, because how are we going to know when we get to excellent if we haven't defined this is what excellent looks like? And how are we on the scrutiny committee going to hold you to account in getting to that excellence? And um, in the middle of that, while I'm asking these really difficult questions, may I say, I think this is a great great thing i think the aspirations are marvelous so please don't think i'm coming across as oh mrs negative it, i think that is great i really do i just i want to get a clear thing in my head is to this is excellent how are we how will we know when we've got there and how will we hold you to account Um, if, if I can sort of uh, come in there, because Elaine, I know your hand went up and down there for, for, for a moment. Um, I mean, it, 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 it's quite quite an interesting question. It, it is is um, you know, does anybody know what excellent looks like? Um, and, and, and does excellence always stay the same? Um, because I know, I know you all said Ofsted excellence it, it isn't necessarily what we're looking for. Because I know they change their mind um, quite quite frequently anyway with that sort of thing. Um, yeah, do we have a, somebody excellent we could all point at and say hello? This is an excellent social worker. Um, <laughs> could we invite them to the meeting? That's that's, a, that's not really a question. Um, but quite, quite, can anybody help answer that at all? Well, I actually think the answer lies with the family's experience. So yes, you're absolutely, and, I, and can I say, Beverly, I really welcome um, the level of push on this because it, you know, that means th that you're passionate as, as we are and that you want us to succeed in it. But the bottom line is, yes, of course, we're going to be judged by Ofsted. And, you know, you, we all know that we've got regulators and we're judged by inspections, but it is the outcomes for our children and families and young people that will make you good and outstanding, not Ofsted. And Ofsted will tell you that themselves. They will measure us against what we're doing, against our ambition, which is set out um, both corporately and politically for our children and young people. And that's what we have to keep going back to, Beverly. 
is reminding ourselves and holding ourselves accountable against those aspirations that have been set in bright futures. And it really is as simple as that. It's not easy to do, but it, the narrative is as simple as that. We just feed the governing body of offset. We don't get driven by them in terms of this is what we want for our children and young people. They help us keep to what good and outstanding might look like, but it's your ambition and it's your passion, be it war councillors, be it wherever you sit in your communities, that will help us get there. And it's those experiences that make the difference for our families. OK, yeah, no, no, that's great. And that, that's absolutely what, what I wanted to hear, which is why I've been, been labouring it. it. It's the people we are serving that judge us and judge whether we're excellent or not, isn't it? It's their experiences. Um, so um, we, we, I will want this, how, how that's going to happen is one thing I'll be looking for. Um, the, the other thing was, I, I said you started to answer was, and I think you may have partially answered it, um, given that there is a shortage of social workers, you know, how are we going to... Um, how are we going to make training for social work more appealing, you know, and more rewarding here? And I think you probably answered that, haven't you? And that's by by demonstrating that we are outstanding, that our families think it's outstanding and uh, people want to be part of a team that's delivering outstanding service to the children and families, which I think is probably what you were really saying, wasn't it? Yeah, and I just want to take you back to that, um, just for, to the first question there, just to let you know that um, we're already testing ourselves on the lived experience of, of, of children and young people. And we've got a lived experience um, project underway where um, we have um, um, some, some of our professionals who are working alongside children and young people and meeting them on a fortnightly or a three week basis. And asking them what what's their experience been like with their social worker or 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 with any connection with children's services that they're having so even though we're not we're not um near that ascent that excellence yet we are also already embedding that practice within what we do within children's services to make sure it becomes part of everything that we do and just testing it testing ourselves all the time against what we're actually delivering so I hope that gives you um, some reassurance that we've, that we'll start that all right already through that lived experience project. Project. And um, with regard with regards to the shortage of social workers, um, I, I'm absolutely confident that the the new recruitment program that uh, the re new the relaunch of the re the recruitment um, work that we that we've just done and this partnership academy. Um, will absolutely attract um, some new social workers because we're starting to promote ourselves a lot better. Get out there and show people that we are a local authority that social workers would want to that would, social workers want to come and work for. Or show them the offer that we have so we can we can attract them in here. We um, we obviously do offer um, golden handshakes and things like that that you will be aware of through through um, through other work that um, that you've heard about. Um, so we'll, we're, we're, we're going to be relentless in that, in making sure that we have got the permanence that we need to take us forward in the future. OK, Rachel, that's fantastic. And, and again, I think the, the aspirations here are, are marvellous. Thank you. I mean, I mean I'd like to follow up with that. I, I think we can all have some part to play on this as well, because um, championing our social workers and the work they do, I, I know it can be very, very easy in, in certain parts of the media to, to, to knock social workers. Um, because they, they seem to be, um, yeah, t take a lot of the, the, the fall for things that go wrong. Um, but something like this it is a good news story, as, as, as several of us have said. Uh, and and I, I think comms needs to run with this. And I think we need to, um, in our, our lives around our communities, mention this to, to let people know that social workers are, are regarded around here. And, and that will get more of them coming to join us. Because if, if we're the best in the area, we'll, we'll get more social workers, won't we? I mean, it's as it's simple as that. Uh, Paul, I notice you have your, your hand up. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, yeah, so again, I emphasise that it is all about retention and recruitment, a positive way forward. Uh, if, if it's not too unfair, uh, if, if for Re Rebecca, could she share some of her either personal experiences of the training or word on the street from her colleagues? Would that be possible, Rebecca? Is that something that you're able to do? Me. Re <laughs> Re 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 Rebecca, it's uh, yes, a bit, bit yeah. slightly, put, slightly put on the spot there. Um, 
Yeah, yeah no, I've done quite a lot of it. <laughs> that, that's cool. So um, with the um, first toolbox stuff, sorry, my video is just trying to say things. Um, with the first toolbox stuff, I actually delivered some of the lived experiences one. So I've one of the ones who volunteered to do that. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so you, you can watch that. I think from seeing other people participate in the ones I went to, it um, it's just giving people an understanding of the depth of all of the different parts of um, children's services and kind of even though you're part of it actually finding out all of the different intricacies so some of the stuff I've done on the unaccompanied asylum seekers has been really interesting I've, I've signed up for as many as possible because I think it's really helpful then we when we look at at the youth voice stuff there's there's elements of it that um kind of I don't do on a day-to-day -day basis but yeah overall it's re been really interesting to kind of um find out all, all of the different parts is that enough detail <laughs> Yeah, no, that's very much appreciated. Sorry no about that. Thanks. That's OK. <laughs> um, so, uh, Rachel, your hand keeps going up. Did you want to say yeah, something? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I, did I, I did, I did, and I just wanted to promote some of the work that Rebecca has been doing, because I think she was being slightly um, modest there. She is part of the lived experience of young people team and part of that project who and she is actually one of the um one of our um employees who is working with the young people to understand their lived experience and um, working closely with them so that we can make the improvements in the service so we can get to that excellence that um and councillor dunlop was um, um previously talking about thank you very much uh, elaine you, you've just Put your hand up as well. well. Just in the spirit of where Paul, the young people, um, on the on in the committee. So I didn't know if they wanted to equally contribute, uh, Georgia and Nathan. If they're still here, I don't know. They may they may have gone, but um, it seems a, a you know an opportunity not to be missed, Paul, since you've introduced um, some uh, real time feedback. So uh, uh, Georgia or Nathan, are you still here? And would you feel um, you, you could add to this? I'm, I can't see them at the moment, so um, yeah. They are still here. I think they're they're, they're panicking they're, they're, slightly about they're, 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 they're in, looking at the messages. They're now in total <laughs> panic and shock. Yeah, yeah um, we had been having a conversation about the um, kind of like lived experience stuff because I said I'd, I'd been involved in some of that, and they were interested to hear some of the messages. So um, yeah, so I think obviously they've not sort of seen any of the the training that's been delivered um to be able to comment on that but in terms of i think they were <laughs> just reading on the whatsapps <laughs> so, 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 so my, yeah. my, my take back for this is that they probably would like to say something but they would like a moment to, that they would like to prepare before they, they were asked to do that so so maybe we could give them the chance of doing that at, at some other time um, <laughs> perfect yeah. oh. um, I'm, I'm looking for any any more any more hands i can't see any more so i'll just i'll try to sum up here because we, we, we've talked about so many things i'm sure i'm going to miss some things out um we, we, we talked about the capacity um, and whether it's large enough. Uh, we've talked about quality assurance in a couple of different ways um, because we talked about quality assurance early on and the idea of good, outstanding and what excellent looks like. Um, the, the first thing I should have said is, is that we came back to the fact that this is a good news story on, on more than one occasion and, and several of us um, mentioned this. Um, we've talked about the number of social workers and um, how, how we can recruit and retain them and get them to want to work in BCP. Um, um, we, I've got the number uh, 2023 written down here, which I, which I know was an important number. Um, so so um, I'm sure I'll remember why I wrote that down in a moment. Um, and yeah, we, again, we talked about the short, shortage of social workers and how this would improve it. Um, I'm looking around, did I, did I miss anything, anybody? No, uh, in, in that case, um, let's move on to the next item, uh, which is uh, item nine, the portfolio holders update. Um, now, uh, yeah, this is, as I said before, this is a bit that we always look forward to. Um, it, 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 either the portfolio holders have any updates for us? I, I, I don't, I think Mike already told me that he hasn't. Um, Nick, I haven't been in touch with you this time. It, it, I'm sure you, you always like to say something, Nicola, so you've always got some news for us. 
<laughs> oh dear, that always sounds slightly damning, actually. <laughs> um, the, um, just a couple of things, if I may, um, Chairman. The first is that um, uh, following on from the earlier discussion, I've been in touch with colleagues um, and can confirm that there were 3,000 hours of detached youth work um, uh, as uh, commissioned as part of the original summer planning, and that was to be used across the um, uh, along the seafront as appropriate. But clearly, there is further work going on with the um, uh, to make sure that this remains a children's issue rather than other issues of antisocial behaviour, because it's really important that I think, as um, Councillor Dunlop has referred to, sorry, as Beverly has referred to that we, you know, we, we define the difference between young people going out to pool, um, along our seafront and why on earth shouldn't they? You know, we live in an amazing place um, and we, we all share that wonderful asset um, and we should be absolutely clear that it's, it is absolutely fine. It's great to be a young person going out and enjoying that rather than, um, you know, somebody automatically assuming that there is an issue of antisocial behaviour there and the really helpful work that um, detached work, youth work can play there. So that was always part of the thinking of the summer response. I know Sarah will be in touch with um, Sophie Ricketts and feedback to the panel. But I do think it's important to understand that was always um, always there. And it did just make me want to reflect, uh, um, Richard, as um, you know, I think this panel has felt a bit like an end of the term meeting. Of course, you know, the professionals um, and the councillors and all our wonderful um, team of volunteers volunteers don't just pack up because it's the end of term we know that everybody works um, on through the summer but I, I do think it's worth important it's it's worth saying this has been an extraordinary year for children and young people you know across the country but um, you know our focus is on uh, those in BCP um, and really just to to recognize the huge impact that that has both had but has been created by the professionals um, whether they be school leaders, teachers, support workers, social workers, I started making a list. Um, and inevitably, when you try to include everybody, you exclude someone. So I must apologise for that. But the amazing teams we have in, in early years, our foster carers, um, you know, who, who have in many cases been under work pressures of their own and yet they've kept their focus on our children um, but for the children and young people of BCP that you only get the chance to be young once don't you um, and to understand what's normal once and this has been an extraordinary time um, uh, for the, the the children to you know through no absolutely no fault of their own um, and we don't want that generation to be defined by that we still want them to have all the opportunities um, that everybody ought to be having in a in, in a modern world and most will be fine they'll be fine they really will um, with support um, but others will have had some you know longer term challenges to that to their well-being and I, you know, I, I just want to make sure that we do everything that we can to encourage them to be to be young, to be happy, to be exploring and, and growing up in a, you know, a safe and greener a place as they can be. Um, and for us all to come back in September with that sort of sense of renewed vigour um, and, to, you know, to send the message to our to our, our young people that we'll be making it happen for them. Thank you very much for that input, uh, Nicola. Um, so, item 10, uh, items of information, as I mentioned before, there, there are a, a couple of items that will be coming round. Um, do please feel free, committee members, to, to email me with, with any points for these items of uh, for, um, information, um, uh, if there's any issues, because we could always pick them up again at a later date. Um, the forward plan, um, I think we, we could do with adding um, an opportunity for us to have a look at this um, this, this website for the, the social work training um, that's been offered us. I don't know. I'd like to see it. I, I don't think it's something for actually to be done in a meeting, but uh, either for a meeting or at other date. But I think it'd be a great thing to be able to do if we get the chance. Um, so um, next meeting dates. Well, they're on the agenda. 21st of September next, the next school term. Um, so, so with that, is it, this is the is said the last meeting. It feels like the end of term. So we're all going to go and sign each other's shirts now and have a water fight. Um, and I'll see you all on the twenty first of September.
it's, it's kind of indirectly and it's around the you know the children and young people's plan which was was a, a great plan it's a great aspiration and and i'm just wondering how that's how that's going to be handled going forward and in terms of the forward plan because that's sort of an overarching aspiration isn't it as to what we want to achieve to our children and we have a number of um, policies and documents coming forward that that really should link into that and show how how they're delivering that plan and, and I, I can't see it all fitting together and I, I think I'd, I'd quite like to see how it's fitting together um, and how things that are coming forward are actually delivering that plan. My, 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 my thought, Mark, is we, we probably could do with a discussion about that um, because it, it, in the meeting it's probably going to be a bit complicated to, to, to talk about it. So, so so maybe we can have a discussion uh, out of the meeting and see if we can um, affect what, what, what you're talking about there. Okay, all right, okay. that's fine. I'll, yeah. I'll we'll sort it out okay okay well well thank you very much for attending in that case um we'll, we'll declare the meeting closed